Hey, everybody. Happy Tuesday. We've got, uh, what, seven more episodes to get to episode one, uh, 200. That'll be a milestone. But uh, tonight we've got the crew from Hakes tuning in, and we've got uh, a recap from their auction that ended uh, not too long ago. And, of course, uh, we haven't seen them in a couple weeks, so we brought them back in to recap some of the highlights from that auction. So let me go ahead and get the entire crew in here. Uh, let's see, in order of importance. Hmm, how should I do this? <laughs> Everybody's raising their hand to me first. I got to bring Alex in first, so of course, because I know uh, he's the man in charge. How are you doing, Alex? Good. How are you, man? I am not too bad. It looks like uh, you're you're pretty chill now. So like, this is like the you know the relaxing period for Hakes, right? Like this uh, you must not have been in an, in the office today. Kelly can tell you a different story. Okay, well <laughs> we'll we'll bring everybody else in, and Kelly can yeah. fill us in. So we got uh, Kelly and Todd and Sean. Sorry, I didn't mean to bring you in last, man. It has nothing to do with your status. I'm always <laughs> last. I'm not even last alphabetically. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so what was going on in the office today, Kelly? Oh, you're muted. You're still muted. Yep. He doesn't. Nobody wants to know what uh, what Kelly's got to say. I can't unmute him. Sorry. There Sorry. we go. Uh, it, it was it actually was better Tuesday. that way. <laughs> Thank you. It was a regular Tuesday. Uh, just um, well, nothing catastrophic. Just a dramatic day. It's no, it, it's funny you say that, Bill. Though you know, it's it's calm. Mm -hmm. No, uh, after an auction, it's as hectic as before. Yeah. I mean, there's. You know the fallout of who won who lost shipping promotion you know we're doing interviews uh, about some of the sales mm -hmm. uh and all the while working on our january auction which is mm -hmm. an online exclusive and our march catalog auction so uh no it, it it you would think there is a law and in this business there is no such thing right, yeah, well shipping, then... shipping is a major undertaking 800 orders that yeah. get created at one time but so you guys, I'm, I don't see any packing tape on either of your desks or anything. So you must have a crew that handles all the, you know, pulling it all together and matching it up with the shipper or any yeah. shipping information. No, we've got a crew. We, we actually lost one guy uh, the, what, the Wednesday of the auction. Uh, one of our staff members got COVID. So, and he's an uh, integral part of the shipping and the figuring out postage and everything. So he just came back. Uh so we just want to fly how to make do, but everyone pulled together. Yeah, orders are are flying out. So carefully. I'm, yeah, I'm I'm not sure um, we're taking off Thursday. I have yet to decide that. We'll see. Depends on how much gets shipped tomorrow, I guess. <laughs> All hands on deck. You might even have Sean. You might you maybe can fly Sean in. He might. He. We're, we're not that desperate. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, uh, Sean. That was not, I was, wasn't trying to give him a slam dunk there, but uh, Todd, where are you at? You, you, you usually have, uh, you know, OEX cards in the background behind you. And, it's uh, uh, raining and cold tonight, so I'm just sitting in my dining room where right. it's warm and dry. Same. Same. <laughs> yeah. so, so Alex is the only one working tonight is what it uh, sounds like. Correct. Uh, at at Hakes, it's never work, so it's, uh, it's, always, it's always a joy. So... <laughs> So uh, to uh, to summarize the uh, the auction, you know, you know, Alex, what would you what would you say? How did how did everything go as an as an overall, not just in the comic card category? Excellent. Everything overall was, you know, my my expectation was I really wanted to do two point five, and we did two point four. I can't argue or complain a, a, about that. And you know, a lot of record prices were set as always. Some things we thought would do better didn't do as well as we thought other things were tremendous surprises so it all balances out uh but no the the three auctions this year the three catalog auctions actually did slightly more than the three catalog auctions last year and that's saying something in the climate that we have the world that we're in right now the economy the fact that it's you know uh, easily discernible that prices are falling on some collectibles we weathered the storm this year and, and came out very very strong that's great. That's great. You know, we had the Comic Art Live uh, last weekend or the weekend before last. And, you know, sales were a little bit down, but the, the interest and activity was was solid. Right. But uh, I think probably in a lot of collectibles niches, one thing we're seeing in Comic Art is you're not seeing a lot of the high ticket items going out on the market mm -hmm. uh, as frequently as they were in 2021 and 2022. So, you know, that's kind of holding sales back a little bit, at least from overall numbers. But um, 
but there's definitely you know the same level of interest i'm sure you saw you guys mm -hmm. same level of traffic on the website yeah. well, and, the, and, any of those years too you know to your point about it's not just comic art with us and and so that helps we have mm -hmm. political and we have sports and we have toys and concert posters and so if uh, one area is a little bit up one's a little bit down it, it balances out same with the the bidders i mean we always have a very active bidding pool because we have so many eyes on the entire auction and i say this you know said it before and it's it's very true that while we have some collectors who are very tried and true and just do political just do comic art just do star wars we have plenty of others that have cross interest mm -hmm. so when you have a wide selection like we do and you have that kind of bidding pool it, it bodes well for what we can do in an auction and it certainly showed that this time so you know across the board i think our consigners were happy i know our bidders were happy and um you know that makes everyone here happy because it is a monumental amount of work to put these auctions together i uh i don't envy you i like being the middleman not being the uh the, the end guy in charge of all that so uh yes alberto just said the state of the hakes is strong so very yeah yeah, no, that's good. I mean, in, in general, I, you know, I think, I think interest is still out there no matter what mm -hmm. happens out in the economy. It's, I think, you know, collectibles and all the, and, you know, certainly in comic art and across most niches are still uh, uh, very, uh, you know, it's, interest is never going to wane. No. Even, even if they're, even if pocketbooks aren't as great as they used to be, but it, they, you know, everything's cyclical. We've gone through down little downturns and bumps in the road in the past, but it, you know, to weather them is good. Um, so you, you guys have picked, a few lots tonight, certainly not as many as we did when we did the preview, but just a, a select set of uh, auctions that we can go over and talk about. Um, and I think some of these we saw previously and maybe a few of them we didn't. Yeah, there's. I did the top 10 pieces of art. Uh, we threw in a couple color guides for Mr. Rue Tan and, and then just a couple miscellaneous at the end of things that we did uh, yeah, mostly talk about. There's a couple on this list that didn't make our initial. Mm -hmm. um, but most of it has been seen. Yes. Cool. So let me see here. I know I've got kind of got everything a little bit out of order, but I'll, well, not, I just have Sean stuff at the end, if that's okay. But uh, just where they should be, Sean, just like bringing you into the end of the show today, you were last. So your uh, color guides will be last, but you know, not the least uh, by any means. They are uh, very last, baby. The cream rises. <laughs> that is right. I love your spirit, Sean uh all right well let's take a look at some of these because what we're going to start off with i know it uh it was the uh the burn cover that ended at uh what thirty five thousand six ninety five from uh from which uh i think yeah i was gonna say that was just past your high end i think estimation which uh which was good i mean i think you're you know where you where you're estimating it is we're right in line with where I would have probably thought that would have fallen. So you guys fell just above that. Yeah. When this first came in, Todd and I talked about I me, mean, Todd being a, a burn fan and it was a little hard to gauge on the content because yes, you can find Superman covers by burn, but Superman Hawkman is a, another um, thing. So we looked at comps. I thought it was right around 20,000 and we have set estimates. So our, we go from 10 to 20 and then 20 to 35. So that was our two choices was pretty confident it would be 20 if not a little bit over so we went with the 20 to 35 but after the great response when we posted this on social media and kelly can attest to the amount of people that looked at it and loved it at new york comic con uh and actually i think was even offered 20 cash um at the show which obviously we turned down because we're an auction house mm -hmm. um it exceeded the estimate and by no surprise with the response we got to it yeah, no, very, it's a strong cover. And uh, I was, what is this? It was action 588, I think. I always forget. Yeah, 588. Yeah. No, I mean, that's great. And I, yeah, to get somebody to offer you 20 grand at New York Comic Con is, uh, it, you know, is a little surprised, but still, I mean, that's, uh, that just tells you that it was a great and very interesting piece from 86. So, no, very, very nicely done. Hopefully, this winds up on calf. I saw Alberto said he, he wants to get his first takes win soon, but he needs to see a few more cap pieces up there first because he is the king of Captain America. I love cap myself. I feel it. Yep. Uh, I didn't even realize that Alberto says he's a, a Lego collector too. All right. 
Uh, let's see here. So let's get over to this right here. So this ended up at 31,152 with a remark from uh, Kevin Eastman. So, and I included this then and I'll include it now as art, but it's obviously comic and art combo. Um, but what's interesting about this, and we had, you know, high hopes for this as well because we thought it was great. At the same time, though, one came out that was a 9.6 with four turtle sketches on the front and three sketches on the back. And that sold at auction the day after ours for, correct me if I'm wrong, Kelly, 37,000? 30, 38, I believe. Yeah, 38. 38. So yeah. if you compare the two, I think we come out on top with our result at a 9.2 with one sketch. It, this was a very strong price for yeah, this book. It was. Especially in this, in this market with how many copies were out there, not all signed, but there are other copies at the same time that were out at you know a different venue that performed under ours. So, mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, what does a non-remarked uh, copy of this book go in that grade? Uh, 9.2 9. 9. just sold for 12 or 13,000, oh, Kelly? 12,000. 12, Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So that was um, when you have multiples of the same book, a key book in the same auction, it can hurt it, you know. So, mm -hmm. and I think that's what happens in that situation. So, yeah. right. Not in ours. Not in ours. You're a fine interviewer, Bill. That was a good question. That was actually my first question. How do they? Compare? Yeah, I mean, because that's one thing. You know, I, I don't follow the remark market too often, so I don't know the you know the uptick you get you know or what the value of something like that would be i mean you know you it know what depends on it depends on who signs it. it depends on the art behind it. It, it, it it depends on your personal taste but in, in this case mm -hmm. i think it was it was tastefully done in a right in the right place on the front cover and uh, just the right place the right time yeah you know what as far as remarks go though it, eastman on turtles is is at the top of anyone's list so it mm -hmm. it is you know upper tier remark book to begin with so mm -hmm. that doesn't hurt right but you know for me it would have been like if you would have told me it was twenty seven thousand dollars at this grade on average and i then i would have i was i was more trying to figure out the, the you know the value that a remark you know adds i to. wouldn't say that the twelve thousand that sold recently was an average price it's just a mm -hmm. recent price uh, yeah. but at the same time so i mean average is maybe slightly higher than that but this this was just a standout moment for this mm -hmm. book us, you know, right. Well, even if it was double 12 and a 24, then it's still, yeah. you know, solid yeah. that a remark uh, and on a graded book can add that much extra value to it. I mean, it's yeah. cool. I, I, it's not something I follow. Um, Eastman is, an, yeah, well, Eastman does a lot of signing. He's got a big, he he's going to be on a big tour this year too with the 40th mm -hmm. anniversary and everything of the turtles. I think it, I think every show people go to, you're, except for OAX, you're going to see Eastman this year. So <laughs> don't be surprised. Uh, probably not a lot of Laird though. I hear he's hard no. to get, get out and about. Mm. Uh, all right. So then this was that, uh, detective comics, 585 cover by Bingham went for just under 15, which is, mm -hmm. um, like three times your high estimate on this one. Yeah. yeah this was a, this one, as well as the last cover, the action cover, both fresh to the market, uh, Correct, Alex. Um, the action Absolutely, company, yeah. Fresh to the market. So, is, and and so is this. So I think that that always helps. Um, and anyone who's listening would probably agree. When something comes to auction or to any show or any any moment for the first time, uh, it it can it can far exceed the estimate because people have never had a chance, uh, at least in in the public space. And then mm -hmm. that, that really helped this piece. I think it helped the many other pieces in this auction and in previous auctions uh, and this putting estimates on things we speak we, we've said it before original art is one of the most difficult things to put an estimate on mm -hmm. uh, and that's just you know and this, this, and, you know we talked about this when the the preview show and and todd can jump in we try to find comps there just right. wasn't many and the content is fantastic so this was one of those things where sometimes we have art where we have apples to apples sort of mm -hmm. you know maybe it's uh you know close enough that you can come up with something in the ballpark there's times where it's apples and oranges or apples and nothing and in this case todd apples mm -hmm. to nothing almost what we yeah yeah this one was kind of a out of the ballpark um but you know 
with both the big covers, you know, action and detective are such core titles into DC. So, you know, people want that kind of content. Yeah. You know, I hate being wrong when I'm guessing on things and I was wrong on this one, but at least I was wrong to the light side because we, we deal with consigners. We don't want to get their hopes up and then crush them. Like, oh, this is worth 30 grand. And then it goes for 12 and then you know, that's that, that's bad news all around. So I guesstimated this somewhere in like the eight range mm -hmm. and it ended up being pleasantly surprising, which is great. Yes. And, and it's worthy. I mean, it's, it's, it, it's worthy. I guess that because I, again, I had no frame of reference. So it was excellent to see it go that way. And like Kelly said, it's just, it's, it's tough. Everyone knows it in this market. It's just tough to guess it. So yeah, you do the best you can. I'm not good at it. I've tried. <laughs> I've failed more often than not. Hey, I have no idea. Number one Marvel fan says that Hakes needs to find the Ben Cooper Jigglers display box. What is a Ben? I know what Ben Cooper is, but what's a Jiggler? You talk, you talking about the Marvel one? I got some hanging Spidey. right up here. If you can see him, Batman right. or Superman? Which one are you talking about? Let's see. Which one? Can you or, see? Which where I didn't see where you're pointing. Uh, right here. Batman or Superman are hanging. Oh yeah, they're hanging on his watch. Oh, right. okay. Yeah. So I got yeah, so it. They did Marvel. They did DC. Uh, we've that. never had a full display box or a display box at all. We've had the loose figures and you know Spider-Man. That they even did a Doctor Strange. I think uh, tied a Red Skull as well. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, the Marvel box will have Red Skull, Thing, Doctor Strange, and it's got the best as far as the marketing on the box. It's awesome. That that one's the cream of the crop. I I've got the full Batman, and my buddy Marv's got the full Spidey boxes, but they're mm -hmm. tough. I've never I've never seen the Marvel one. Is that there it? There it is. Oh yeah. I was trying to yeah. Google it while you guys. Oh yeah. It. No, it's great. Imagine that full now to the rim. <sighs> Darn, I've, never, I've never seen that. That is great. Mm -hmm. Someone bring that to Hakes. Please. It's, it's going to do five figures. I'm, I'm going to call it. Uh, yeah. 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 Well, there's no Cyclops in there, but it's pretty good. Uh, <laughs> you, got, you got Red Skull on the thing. And yeah, that's not bad. I forgot Spidey was in that box, too. It's even mm -hmm. better. All right. Cat. Well, I wouldn't mind having one. But how, uh, was, never, how much Red Skull one. merchandise is there from that time period? Very I mean, Ben Cooper uh, very, pretty much yeah, had, yeah. had a corner. Yeah, they yeah. had the they had the, the, the boxed costume. Yeah, well, they, they actually make a Red Skull costume for Ben, yeah. ben yes, Cooper. It's so good. Yeah. Yes. yeah, but it's that. It's this. I can't even the, imagine. That. It's the Slurpee Cup. As far as solo, now he appeared on like a board game and other right. or, some or other conglomerate things, but individual pieces. You're uh, that's about the only three. Yeah, yeah, I can't think of Sweetwood or I hear anything like that either. So I think you're right. Right. So interesting. Cool. All Very right. Cool. Well, well, that was a good awesome. tangent. Tangents are sweet. Bring them on. Yeah, exactly. No, I had to know. Um, yeah. All right. So what do we got next here? We have this. Uh, this would be one for 10,384. Uh, Jeff Wack. Yeah, we looked at this one before. This was yeah. uh, it was an oversized painting, right? Oh, that's. Uh, Right, I think we got pictures of uh, mm -hmm. of Jeff signing it. Yeah, yeah. yeah there were two versions. There was an uh, in front of them. There's the unused version, and then there's the version they used. Um, and VHS art itself is to call it strictly VHS original art is is rare to come by anyway, because a lot of the time they use the movie poster for the art, or it was a real photo from the movie, and so there actually wasn't a lot of unique art with VHS period. Mm -hmm. So we had a collection of VHS art and production stats and production art come through. This is part of it. And uh, this piece was actually used on uh, 57, 58 copies, two episodes per. So if you had Star Trek, the next generation on VHS, you've seen this image, you you have it in your collection, you have it somewhere, because it was used so many times. It was just it was they, they didn't change it the whole way through which really helped. I think that, that that helped the value of this piece is the fact that someone saw it or many people saw it, saw the, saw the art and, re and recognized it and had to have it. Mm -hmm. so it, it really, it, it got to the top of the estimate. And if you're a fan, this is, this is an iconic image. Mm -hmm. And it's huge, which is really great. No, well, and it's a crossover item as are yes. many for you guys. Marcus is right. They do take a photo and airbrush for, and for, they, 
they would then call that photo art when they would airbrush photos from it. Oh, really? Yes. Okay. <clears throat> what, Marcus, yeah, what, what Marcus is talking about. I'm not familiar with that. Interesting. Yeah. Make it so. You got that right, Mikhail. Uh, next item. That was, oh, that's right. This is the uh, DPS from Swamp Thing 50, Brick Beach. Let's take a look at that. This was up by uh, Alex's alley, if I'm not yeah, mistaken. I mean, absolutely. If you know me from previous uh, appearances, I love Swamp Thing art. I love Rick Beach. Uh, I thought this was a great page. Uh, I had sort of a price of mine, and Todd worked it out of, of what we thought an estimate. A little hard to tell because of sort of the unique nature of this. At the same time, the main figures were small. You know, it, it's it's one of these things you really have to see in person to, to get the full effect. So this was one of the real surprises that it brought as much as it did, but it's a testament to just how strong uh, Swamp Thing remains in the art market from mm -hmm. origins with Bernie Wrightson all the way up to modern day. I think another part of it may have been the fact that the, the two page spread exists is still together mm -hmm. and somebody wanted to keep it together and that's mm -hmm. that, that um, and they wouldn't give up on that, which I think helps the value of that. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. It's, a, <clears throat> well, yeah. it's great art. I mean, like you said, the figures are a little small, but it doesn't matter. At the end yeah. of the day, it's uh, it's a piece of comic art history in its own way. So it's uh, from issue 50 of Swamp Thing. Mm -hmm. Always going to be important. Yeah, no, it's nice. And uh, I forget, what was your estimate? Sign it off to two. One so, to two, yeah. yeah. Uh, cool. Well, congrats to the consigner on that one. He did well. Then uh, we, what is it? Uh, okay, Joe Cuber, GI Combat 68 page. This was the, 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 I remember the one, I love the second panel on this thing where the guys are all rated a bazooka, a tank. Uh, yeah, <laughs> that's nice. I got to give Todd props on this one. It was his research, I think, to help push this. Yes, one. it was. It was unnamed. Um, yep. But again, what would we all do if a tank was coming towards us and we had a bazooka? I mean, we would do the same thing, right? Yeah. Well, if your life's going to end soon, but uh, this is the one with the where the uh, Sergeant Rock mentioned all that. I mean, uh, mm -hmm. the first, so that's uh, pretty cool. That definitely had to help this out. But Sergeant Rock prototype, is that right? Prototype, yes. Prototype issue, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It was uh, very historic <coughs> page. Yeah, well, one of these days I'll own a Cubert myself. Uh, let's see here. So no, that went well. Where was the, uh, I don't recall what this one was set at. So it was 10. So, so you, this one came, came at the end, like on the lower end of, uh, yeah. And this, so this will tell you when you, when you look at comps, there was, when we first got this, there was really nothing. And within yeah. the next month of us cataloging things, we found another page from this issue that sold for 14,000. Mm -hmm. And so we based our price on that, but if those two bidders went after that and really wanted that page and didn't want this or the other bidder uh, wasn't involved uh, at all, you can see how prices can fluctuate. So I think it's still a very strong price for what it is. Uh, it just didn't top the previous page from this issue. But I think, Todd, you also saw a title page or something else from this issue recently come I up. I saw one that a dealer has. It's actually the title page from this, but it, there's, there was no price. So. Hmm. Hmm. So we went from having basically no pages of this issue for ever or for quite some time to having three available in a two month span. Right. <laughs> well, it doesn't make it easy ever, but uh, no, no. I mean, uh, I was I was looking at that cutout just to see. So they just had to do, make some changes to his uh, his likeness. Apparently. Yes, to his face. Yeah. Interesting. Oh, pretty commonplace to see stuff like that from back in that era. Yeah. Let's see. Uh, next up. Oh, that was the uh, piece by Jim Valent. Uh, this one was went for 8177 so a little bit over the estimates. This was uh, uh, from, this was an interior page, right? Or am I mistaken? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Splash from uh, right. uh, yeah. Edition 25. Got it. All right. Yeah. And as we talked before, you know, very little. Catwoman published art by Jim out there on the market. We assume mm -hmm. he's holding uh, most of that. Mm -hmm. This is about as nice as any piece I've ever seen of the few come to market. Certainly this dynamic. Um, I loved it. I chased it. 
I didn't get it. So congrats to uh, the winning bidder. But interesting in talking with the consigner of this, there is a cover that he has in his collection. So I'm hoping that in the next auction or in the not too distant future, we will see a uh, cover and see what that does because as great as this is at 8,000, that would pale if a cover came up mm -hmm. from his run. I would say uh, stay tuned to our social media. It um, should be soon if it's going to happen. Having cool. said that, I teased last time about a movie piece of movie post art that has yet to materialize. So this is the, and Kelly can tell you the one Green Lantern page that we had talked about before. Some things can take years to surface, even though a person says they have it and they're gonna give it to us. Some things come right away, other things we, we work at. So that's sort of the day-to-day -day challenge and struggle of an auction house is we don't have a warehouse that we can just order stuff from, right? We, we've got to hope that the right people with the right stuff contact us on a daily, weekly, monthly basis so mm -hmm. that we can keep doing these auctions. Speaking that's, why of, we, uh, that's why we sent Sean on the road. He loves to go on the road. I think you could probably do a little road show for Hakes on, on, you know, on your YouTube channel. You can have you know Sean out there in the trenches yep. digging yep. up the great finds. He can, you know, he's the next American uh, pickers. Uh, American spot. Hakers. <laughs> yes. Sean's working on a whole vaudeville act for your expo, so be ready for that. <laughs> we got hey, we're gonna have a lot of cameras during there. We've got tunes about three. Captain America and all kind of surprises for you. Throwing his mighty shield, you got it. <laughs> I'll bring you that uh you know the shield back there that Stan Lee signed, and uh you can you can model that for us. Well, but uh, but we will have three videographers there who are gonna be shooting a lot of stuff. So Very ham nice. it up. I won't you know. Ham it up. I'll even give you the, the Hakes reels off of it so you can use them, <laughs> uh, you know, for however you see fit, you know, company parties in the future. I don't know. I won't forget that. I mean, we'll, we'll, we'll talk after, after the show. All sure. right. You got it. Right on. Uh, but this is great, though. You're right. There's just not enough of his, uh, his yeah. uh, Catwoman work out there. So if you were able to get a cover one day as well, I mean, that would be, uh, that'd be a coup. That'd be very nice to see. Uh, and then, okay, so we got the Jusco uh, corner box art. This one went for just under eight. And that's kind of like around the middle of the estimate going into it. But, you know, I think that's that's kind of about average, I think, with the with the resale on these have been um, from what I've seen. From the yeah, the, the few at, at auction recently, the last few years, were a tick under this. Yeah, um, I'm not sure this is the most ever at auction, but it's certainly among uh, the highest prices. But it's also Spider-Man. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep, that is for sure. Um, because these are oversized. I forget this, how large they are, but uh da, 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 da. can't find it in there. Yeah, it's like oh, twenty by thirty. Yeah, there you go, twenty by thirty. Yep. Mm -hmm. So no, it's uh it's great. And that was how uh that's how Jesco printed them up when he was selling them at shows, I think, right? Not cool bad. Piece. Yeah. Yep. I uh, I think I've seen a few of these in person uh, in the past. Uh, very nice. Yeah. Let's see here. Oh, that's right. We got the uh, recreation by Joe Simon from Captain America Comics 10. This one went for $7,500, uh, which is right in the middle of your estimate. I was wrong again. I thought it would go a little bit, a little bit under that, a smidge under that. So it was nice to see. You said, Alex, in your research, you found very few Joe Simon recreations, period. There's not a lot that is this size that's that are the full cover, and I couldn't find any of this issue. So this may be a one-off, and he didn't do more. Mm -hmm. And I've seen them go as ten, uh, twelve thousand, 12,000, uh, depending. So, yeah, this was in the middle of a range and, and solid for, for what it is. Yeah. Nice. No, it's nice. I mean, he's, you know, Simon did do a fair number of recreations out there. I mean, I, it's, they don't come up too, too terribly often, but this is, you know, anybody who's a fan of that era and a fan of Cap, um, you know, is definitely, this is kind of up their alley, right? I mean, yeah, it's uh, must have. Afraid of the character. So many of the originals are gone. So I think, you know, Simon made, made some money over, you know, as he, after he'd retired and everything to be able to, you know, get some of these pieces out there to uh to varying success but this is definitely a really well 
accomplished piece from from ones that I've seen. So uh, not bad. Whoever bought it, I think is going to be thrilled to have it in their collection. Let's see. I was just curious what uh, did it that. What was the year that it was done? I'd say somewhere in the mid nineties is my guess. Nineties, maybe. Yeah, yeah, it's not on there. Um, cool. Ah, uh, see, this is uh, I know this, you guys were all interested in this piece. I know Sean was very interested in this one, so I uh, went for six thousand four ninety, and uh, that's a little bit over the estimate. So good. Toy yeah, the, uh, this, this, um, that's okay. This, for me, as, as this large size and just impactful image, I, I mean, we we said the estimate was two to five, right? It went, it went, it went yeah. over that, so that was mm -hmm. a, a very strong price. And and I we didn't have too much other Kenner <clears throat> uh, full fully realized box art to to compare it to. Is that right? I mean, when, yeah, I, no, I, think I did most research on this, and then I, it got just uh, through Todd and everyone else. So. Um, we weren't completely in the dark of where it should be, but uh, I'm glad it went over. And yeah, also beautiful. Well, as far as so, yeah. toys, this is kind of a key piece from that period. Everybody yeah. remembers it, you know, of a certain age. So, you know, it's just a nice rendered piece, colorful, mm -hmm. large. And this was the Tad Moore collection, right, Kelly? Yes. Yeah, yeah. So this, yeah, this came from a guy who is a toy collector. I had some art as well, but a, a toy collector. So that, again, you talk about the duality that played into both of his loves then art and toys. Mm -hmm. That's what I was going to say. I mean, we have toy collectors and we have art collectors. So if you're going to sell something like this. It's yeah. And, and Batman collectors in general, right? Doesn't have to be a toy. It can just be Batman. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, he was a toy and prototype and art collector, obviously. He has uh, many other prototypes as well. So this falls into that pre-production world um, mm -hmm. where I, I've met uh, many prototype collectors that that get into the, the original art world because that's for toys. This is in that prototype vein, mm -hmm. the, the, the pre-production. And vice versa, but to a lesser degree, I find. Yeah. Surprisingly so. Yeah. And it may not be uh, as dynamic as this, but Kelly has a killer card art prototype coming up for march correct yes i'm drawing a blank here but yes uh yes i'll i'll, uh, I'll go with you on that i'm, I'm yes it's revenge me. oh that one sorry yeah a lot's been going on it's, it's a, <laughs> another tuesday that thing is incredible uh we will wait to see yes it is i i thought you were talking about something that was coming it is mm -hmm. it, that is already here so yeah is yeah. uh, in the in the building, so that's um, incredible. So you just, we're gonna have to wait what three months before we get to find out what it is. Uh, maybe a little sooner. We'll see, you know, I like to tease here and there. I can't show everything at once. You know, keep them keep people working. Uh, Got to keep everybody guessing. I get it. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So uh, now these uh, this I know this was a high ticket item for uh, for you guys, this, and we looked at these before. These these, these gum. Wolverine gum, true stories, tree, you know, trading card basically from 1936. And it went for what? 65,000. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Off a 10 to 20 estimate, which was conservative. I, I definitely thought that this could go over 20. I did not think 65. Uh, having said that, try and put a set together. It's near impossible. We've had only a few single cards in our 56 years, never a full set. It's PSA graded. I think seven of the cards were the highest graded. It also came with the wrapper. But the key piece is that Batman card. So now we have mm -hmm. non-sport collectors that want this. We have sport card collectors that are gravitating to the non-sport market. And we have Batman and superhero and comic book collectors that didn't know about this card forever because you never see it. A couple surfaced the last few years. So now there's great interest from that whole crowd. So this was the catalyst for the price. But the fact that it was an entire set graded, you're done. Maybe you want to upgrade a card or two over the years if you can, if that's even possible. So this ended up being, again, the, the, the surprise at auction because this was the biggest ticket item. And we certainly did not expect that going into it. We have four other pieces on the front cover that we f thought would vie for that title. And actually some of the pieces that we featured in a smaller way on the back cover trumped some of the stuff on the front cover so 
You just never know. Mm-hmm. And you know, one of those cards gave me an idea for a dueling dealers meme. I mean, look at that. Three three guys buried up to their heads in the thick. <laughs> I think I can work out a few jokes with that. I like Use that. It. <laughs> Use it. <laughs> That's good. Uh, but sure, I mean, come on, for you know, I mean, I I've never been a trading card collector, but for somebody who is, I mean, the idea that you can get the uh, you can get it all uh, at one fell swoop, something that historically yeah. makes a lot of sense that you would have a few people competing to get it. Um, and, you know, and just out of curiosity, I mean, here's another one of those, uh, you know, off topic, uh, I guess, questions on something like this. So were these, you know, would a collector get these and then uh, mix and match them into their own just to get a better set and then sell oh, it? Absolutely. Right? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, that yeah, that's, that's what card collectors do, just like comic collectors, right? You're always upgrading and trying to get the highest grade. With this set, though, that's very, very difficult just because of the small amount that exists mm -hmm. and then yeah. also higher grade examples. So they're this set does not have all of the highest graded it has some of the highest graded i think there's really only one set in the census that's that's higher it may be only one complete set in general versus singles mm -hmm. so yes if you want to really have a project now you have the set now you try and upgrade so who knows how many years that could take to advance this collection in uh grade but it sure it could, could happen and collectors do do that Okay, makes sense. Uh, did we look at this one? I'm not remembering this one. This is a Superman art uh, card, or uh, not art uh, card that went for twenty three and a half, and that's over your high estimate. So, not bad. Yeah, so this is just back to what I was saying about the non sport and sport card collectors now combining, plus Superman collectors, plus comic book collectors. That's all really taken off in the last five ten years or so where it was just really non-sport collectors or superman collectors in the past and again you're going for high grade and there are very few that are higher even though this is only a six for this card from 1940 that is a very high grade so 10 to 20 thought we'd certainly be at the higher end of that and it was um just over mm -hmm. and if you know seven go higher and eight go higher i mean you, you could something like an eight or nine turns up serious price on that card for that grade. Yeah. Did this, uh, this card sold recently, Alex, in different grade? I forget. Yeah, uh, maybe a four for uh, 11 or 12,000. I, I don't remember off the top of my head. I don't think. I, I figured, I thought we did, we, we did exceed that. Uh, no, we did. No. Uh, so a four uh, realized 9,900 in September this year. That's right. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> you got to have a photographic memory in this uh, business, Alex. <clears throat> uh, now I do remember this one. That was that uh, one-off uh, Captain Marvel cape, and one for or twenty-eight and a half, well over your estimates. Again, this was a. How can you put a price on it? Because it is truly one of a kind. No other has surfaced up to this point. I don't think you're ever going to see another one. It's believed to have never been put, while this isn't a prototype, it, it is produced, it is printed. It most likely never went into production. So this is the sole surviving example. This was the pride and joy of the Harry Matetsky collection. I put five to 10 on it. It wasn't gonna surprise me if it did 15 or 20. So the 28, you know, it, it, you're not gonna find another one. So when will the next one come up for sale? Whenever the winning bidder of this wants to sell it and that, Maybe never. Yeah. This falls into this like putting an estimate on this falls into the same thing of original art. It's the same. It's it's it's, it's unique. It's one of a kind, and it's you you throw a number out there, and you know you and it's not surprising that it went it went above that because yeah. of, of what it is, where it came from, and and how important it is in the history yeah. of of, um, of Captain Marvel. It's like putting a, you know, how do you put a number on Todd's talent? You know, you have a one to 10 scale. That's, that does no justice. Uh, I mean, I've, I've heard a number thrown around, but I don't know. If, uh, <laughs> <laughs> you, know. You, you meant to say Sean's talent. I know, Alex, but. Uh, <laughs> Why well, you got to bring me back? No, in no I, I definitely didn't mean to say Sean's talent. <laughs> <laughs> uh yeah that, that would joe k says expensive cosplay that would be but i, I don't think anybody's gonna be wearing this to a con anytime soon 
It does have a feel. It does kind of look like a bib. But hey, this is you know what? When was this made? I mean, it's it's old. Forty eight, nineteen forty eight. Right. Yeah, I can see why. Uh, uh, you know, this it just it is what it is. These are this kind of stuff is rare. And I remember somebody even saying in the chat that like there there was that. Uh, I remember being told as a kid like Marvel or DC stopped making capes because kids thought they could like fly and they would jump off things and there was all these fears of lawsuits. I mean, I don't know if that's true, but I remember On, hearing that hearing that when I was a kid. In no, the, it's very true. In the it's very true. In fact, if there if there are some capes where it basically said, "Don't put this on, you can't fly." So they had to put a disclaimer on at one point. Yeah. Well, kids are dumb. <laughs> we had nothing else better to do in the seventies, man. That's trying to jump off the you know your roof of your house with a with a cape on was uh, about the most fun you could have. Uh, Alberto says he'd wear it to OAX. I just want to see Alberto dress as Captain America at OAX so you can make the uh, the sizzle reel that we put together. Uh, let's see here. Uh, yeah, we didn't look at uh, any anything like this. So this is no, after the show. Sean said, "What are you doing? You didn't have any Star Wars toys for me to talk about." So here you go, Sean. I the just floor is yours. I don't even know where to start when there's not a kid with a bowl cut somewhere in the packaging art. I don't know what to do. <laughs> now I put this up for Kelly because this again, you want to talk about surprises, and we've been selling Star Wars better than anybody the last five seven years record price after record price you think we'd have a gauge on the market but here's a surprise right this was it, it was a world price i mean our last early bird kit it wasn't an 85 but if they think it was an 80 or an 80 plus it was around ten thousand, roughly we've had an 85 in the past they brought twelve thousand a couple of years ago um an afa 85 is very similar to saying cgc 9.6 Anyone who wants to know that the, the translation, uh, it's, it's a very high grade. This is a, it's also a very difficult set to get in high grade. Mm -hmm. You're grading the box, which was mailed to you. You're grading the figures. Right. You're grading the tray, which is very brittle. You want to explain that so they know what the early bird kit means? Uh, early bird, uh, when the movie came out, the licensing with Kenner had just started. So they, had, they, they were rushing to make toys. And uh, the movie came out in May of 77, and it wasn't until... Christmas of 77 into January of 77 when toys finally were coming out and you were able to go to the store and get a certificate to get toys eventually. And this is the, the set of toys you would get after you had to get a, sle a sleeve of cardboard at the store. That was exciting at the time. Uh, it wasn't exciting at all, but it was exciting enough because everyone loved the movie and they kept going back to see it. Uh, and then eventually you got this kit. Sometimes it had a double telescoping loop which is this example, which is the saber, the rare version of lightsaber. Um, this has that. So this really has everything going for it. It's a, it's the double telescoping Luke. It's an AFA 85. And it really did. It went, it doubled the last result we had of this grade. Um, at, I'm sorry, 24,000 was it? Um, I, I actually don't uh, know. 25. 25,000. Yeah, 25, mm -hmm. yeah, it was, um, it was, it's a world record price as far as I'm concerned. Um, so it's, it's uh, uh, oh, <laughs> the first uh, Kenner action figure toy to to be produced for Star Wars. Is this set? So it's almost cool. like a TV dinner from that era. Yeah, uh -huh. pretty much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah, it's uh, yeah. The the whole story. I mean, it takes. It's a very long story. The, the the story of Kenner and Star Wars and the toys and how it all started was a huge risk um, for a toy company to get behind a movie and. Other no companies passed company. on the property, right? Right, right. No, no toy company has, has ever done this, and and why would you ever put so many toys out around one movie? This is insane, you know, this is because the the the, the movie is going to come out, and then it's, it will be gone. And then why would kids? Why would you keep making toys for it? But it actually, the the toy is being released, and for so long, actually helped the popularity of the movie stay, where movies would be in the theaters for a year plus which was, mm -hmm. yeah. was insane. and so to put kenner, all, kenner on the map and other companies that passed mm -hmm. some of those uh folded shortly thereafter absolutely yeah they i'm surprised mattel didn't didn't get involved but they didn't see it they didn't they mattel had other toy lines based on tv shows uh if i'm not mistaken is that right todd uh amiga was in the running for this one Amigo. and yeah. they right. passed even though they had all the 
other television properties, but right. for whatever reason, they didn't jump at Star Wars and the rest yeah. is history. Yeah, it all started like a, a month before the movie even came out, which was to, to even start the process in April, and the movie comes out in, in um, uh, yes, right, Alberto. Um, I'm giving you the cliff notes of the history, but uh, but uh, it, it can go on and on. But yeah, it was well, the main thing too, right? It revolutionized action figures in that this size. That was another yes. issue was yeah. that before this, they were not three and three quarter inch or give or take, depending on. Right. So right. the whole concept from the size of the figure and, and doing it for this movie, everything was, was new and Kenner was willing to take the risk that others weren't. It was much cooler because now boys could no longer play with dolls. They could play with action figures. So that was, uh, you know, much thank better. goodness for that. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm kidding. They weren't all dolls. That was uh, that's sort of an inside joke with Alex. So, 1964 G.I. Joe is an action figure, son. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> Ken, that's a doll. G.I. Okay. Joe, that's an yeah, action those, figure. Those G.I. Joes were like a foot tall, practically, weren't they? I mean, they were. Yeah, 12 yeah. inches. Like yeah, they were a small child or something. Yeah. I yeah. remember those. Yeah. Um, but Alberto mentioned that the History Channel has uh, yeah. an episode dedicated to that. I, I've, I've seen some of those episodes of the Toys That Built America, but I have not seen that one. Yeah, we uh, we actually ended up selling the collection of the gentleman who helped, who, who spearheaded the entire conversation. We've actually, it, it's very interesting because we sold the collection from either side, the gentleman from Kenner and the gentleman from Lucasfilm, who they, each of them got together, Charles Lippincott and, uh, oh, uh, uh, Craig, uh, he, uh, Oh, my apologies, I, I've, I've, I've forgotten his name, but we, we, we've sold both their collections, uh, and it was very interesting to, to to speak with with both of them and speaking to Mr. Lippincott's uh, widow mm -hmm. about, about mm -hmm. the all the history behind Star Wars. It goes on and on and on. It's a it was a, a, a pop culture phenomenon that's still going on today. So, yeah. Well, on to the next item. I think uh, this is in Sean's wheelhouse so it's 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 fitting that he's in the position of power right now at the top of the screen. so uh, what do we got here just over four thousand dollars on this one so about double the max estimate mm -hmm. on it four thousand dollars so i think this auction shows that color gods because a very short time ago this was a four hundred dollar yeah piece mm -hmm. and now it's four thousand dollars now granted that's a thick stack of art right there so there could be a i don't know what the I don't know who won it. I don't know what the intent is. There could be, you know, there could be resale. I don't, I don't know. But regardless, very short time, four hundred dollars. Color guides are for real from a collector standpoint. Uh, I think that there's another benefit to it as a buyer that it's still niche. Like even though it's it's obviously growing and showing that it's doing well, I think that it's still a niche hobby. So I can speak from experience. You know, if the wallet starts to dry up and there's not too many of us, you'll see things go like undervalue because we can only buy so much of it. There's not, there's not the the volume of collectors yet. So that's another, you know, you never know where they're going to lie when, it, when stuff comes to market. And then uh, we had a bunch of these come through. I, when I, I got Andy's collection and this was the last of it. So I think that the last six auctions have shown that we care about color guys. At least I do. I mean, I, every time I'm on here, I'm, I'm talking about them as a personal collector. So I, I think that we've shown that we do pretty well with them. We care about them. We will promote them. And I think most important of all, we, we bring the buyers to them as this, mm -hmm. this price shows. And the Wolverine cover uh, also went strong. Both of them went. I thought they'd go 18, maybe 2,200. So it was, a, again, another pleasant surprise. On the, I was on the low end of the estimate. All right. So that was the uh, – that one went for four, and then this one went for 35. Yep. You to watch. To see it. I, I love seeing it. Though. Yeah. Well, uh, Hannigan's one of my favorite artists from this period. So, I mean, he uh, he did a lot of covers too. So, seeing this, you know, this stuff just brings back memories. At the end of the day, you know, it's awesome. Yeah, it's bang for your buck. Look at all those characters. That's why mm -hmm. that book was so cool. Sorry. Yep. You get the. You can get Wonder Man and the White Queen on the same cover, so not bad. Huh. 
<laughs> good choices. What was that? I'm not watching that. Uh, but yeah, there's a. Uh, that's right. These there were these in there. I forgot about that. And it was another stack too. Yeah. Hmm. Well, no. As always, so you're running out of color guides. Is that what the you're you're trying to tell us? Is for me, Andy's collection. Yes, that's. This is the last event. Unless there's a couple that haven't sold, that might mm -hmm. you know, or if someone over over bit, like got bit off more than they can chew and they can't pay, something like that. But other than that, as far as the, you know, the, the pure collection itself, this was the last of it. So. Hopefully, if you wanted color, guys, you got in because, like we saw with the Joe Simon when his when his estate hit the market in 2011, flooded the market. There was eight pieces every week on Heritage, and then it right. disappeared for years. Now you don't see them ever, not ever, but very rarely, very infrequently. And for many years, I can tell you from experience, color guides, unless you had one pop up on eBay at random, it was only when the artist would liquidate that you would see them hit. Like when the Adler estate hit, there were a bunch of DC and they're still actually hanging out there on eBay. They don't, for some reason, they get black hole. And I believe it's because the people who have them, though, these things, I'd rather have my, you know, three, four, five years ago, I'd rather have my $50 than sell this one of a kind cover or vice versa. They don't, they don't, they're not going to get rid of it for a low dollar amount. I'd rather have the art than your $50. Well, now if $50 is $5,000, now the conversation starts to change. And that's, that was the same way with, you know, original art back in the late eighties, early nineties. And it was, you know, look where it is now. So mm -hmm. I'm not saying there's a direct correlation, but it's the trends are similar. Well, scarcity definitely drives uh, pricing in any yep. market. Yeah. No, uh, that's, uh, that's cool. So these, that was our last item to go over though yep. tonight. That wasn't it. Yeah. So, so like you guys said, you're finishing up packing right now. You're also taking consignments actively. So I, I know we kind of always remind everybody, but if they want to want to talk consignments with any anyone in particular, I mean, can they just go to Hakes in a general manner and get, get directed to a uh, you know the right person, or does uh, you know does it? It's kind of like whoever gets it tackles uh, tackles any inquiries with, with regards to consignments. Yeah, it's sort of sort of that it depends on who's available. We want to get back to people as, as fast as possible, but mm -hmm. you can contact myself, uh, Kelly. Sean, Todd, um, you know, just give a little bit of, uh, of our schedule. So in January, we're going to have one of our online exclusive auctions. That's capped right now. No, we're not really taking consignments at this point. That will be a combination of uh, about a thousand comic books, Kelly, I think. Yeah. Uh, hundreds of, of action figures. It's going to be 2,500 lots. I would not be yeah, surprised. There's going to be, and there will be some art. There will be some page art, 40 or 50 pieces of more recent, mostly DC art, Todd. Is that yeah? It's accurate? a lot of uh, Batman animated style art uh, from uh, Terry Beatty inks, that kind of thing. There may uh, be some right. other random pieces as well of of other art as well. Yeah. yeah. So there there'll be art, comics, toys. Political. But that'll be one that's you know it's nine ninety nine starting bid for everything. Mm -hmm. Most of what's in the auction is under four hundred dollars, if not even under two hundred dollars. So very collector friendly. Uh, but but lots of choices and then we're also working on what will be our next premier auction in march that will be a cataloged auction we will be even taking consignments at oex for that it's nice to have it before that so we can do promotion and so forth um if anybody is is watching and interested i urge that you check with us and there are plenty of options obviously to consign I personally feel we're the best. We we've been around longer than anybody. 1967, right? 56 years in the auction business. I've been here 38 years. All the guys on the screen here are tried and true collectors. We love this stuff. We treat the objects as if they're our own. Uh, as far as rates go, we'll match or beat anybody. That's never an issue for the right material. So, whether you choose us or someone else, I'd say at least start the conversation. Let, let's talk and and see what we can do for you. Yeah. I have to ask you this, Alex. Who is what is the figure to just over your right shoulder? It's uh, yes, right. just over the shoulder. The female is. I'm assuming. Oh, that's a, a Rolling Stone. Some girls' record store display. Ah, okay. Because I'm like, I, I don't remember seeing that in your office before. Usually, I have it like over here, and I show off my a video game that I got from my buddy Rutan. But you know, it brings back bad memories for him and his. 
trials and tribulations of the Frogger. So I didn't do that this time. <laughs> I went more on this side of the room. You see him twitch a little bit on camera. Yeah. He, he, he can see it in the background. I get it. I get it. No, but that's that's uh, that's cool. And I, I mean, and uh, and uh, you know, I'm glad you guys are going to be at OAX. Uh, you're a partner sponsor in the show. We we obviously really appreciate that. And uh, and we're just really getting into our local marketing right now as well. We were kind of waiting to get past Comic Car Live, but now that we're you know around 70 days out, we're making a big push uh, locally with all the comic shops and uh, and and a few of the uh, buy sell groups that are down here in Florida related to comics that are on Facebook that we know of. So uh, we're gonna we're gonna do our best to to bring in you know the local collectors, both art collectors, yeah. and uh, you know if we can get a few other people in there interested to, to see the auction, yeah, you know, uh, opportunities that are at the, the show, that's cool too. So uh, well, we got your right. promo card, and we've been inserting those in our packages. I that are going out right now. So I uh, yeah, that was that was very nice. You guys to do that. No other auction house offered that service so, yeah, as an opportunity to help me. I, tr I truly appreciate you guys' partnership. No, no problem. Yet, yet another reason why Hakes. There Choose you go. Them. It's true. That is very I mean, true. Look at these guys on screen. How can you not want to turn your art over to them? I don't understand <laughs> this. <laughs> exactly. No, it's going to be a good time in uh, in January. I mean, I think we're uh, we're over 300 ticket sales now. So I think it's nice. pretty, we're, we feel pretty comfortable. There'll be 450 uh, to 500. Art, you know, art collectors there, which is great. You add in 150 exhibitors and artists, and that's going to be, uh, you know, a very good time for everybody. But um, when you get time to launching that, uh, your the, the smaller auction in January, obviously hit me up with the yeah. PR. Yep. And uh, and again, anybody think of selling anything art related, toy toy uh, toy related, or uh, Americana, any any of those things, uh, you comic can books, comic yeah. books, yes, comic exactly. Books. So uh, hakes.com. That's the place to go, and I know that uh, even right now, any of the ads that are on CAF link over to the their con, your consignment info page too yep. after the auction. So, uh, all right, guys. Well, listen, I appreciate it. We we got this done in under an hour tonight, but I I you know I always have a good time talking with you guys, and um, looking forward to the, actually getting together in person. Yeah, uh, with all yeah, of us sure. finally in nice. uh, after the new year. So uh, have a great Thanksgiving, right? Yeah, you yeah. Yeah. I hope you don't have to work. It sounded like Alex is a little on the fence whether or not you're coming in on Thursday. I'll let you know. We'll let you know. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everybody. Well, thank you for tuning in. Always, yeah, and Pogs, maybe, Marcus, if they're rare Pogs, you might be able to, you know, see what they're going to be. Uh, all right, yeah. art. bringing the pog art all day long. I'm not even going to lie about pogs. Sorry, <laughs> you know. yes, but pog original art. There's a there's an opportunity there yeah, for sure. Poss possibly, possibly. All right. Well, thank you, Marcus, for asking that question. Uh, all right, everybody, have a wonderful evening. Tomorrow night, I've got a make offer show with Berkey, so that'll be fun. But uh, as always, great hanging out with the Hakes crew, and uh, we'll see you.